Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the uh, February March 2020 Cambridge 9709 paper four variant two, the mechanics M1 paper. And here we are told about a particle P of mass 0 0.4 kilograms is on a smooth on a rough, sorry, horizontal floor. The coefficient of friction between P and the floor is mu. A force of magnitude 3 newtons is applied to P upwards at an angle of alpha to the horizontal, where tan of alpha is 3 quarters. The particle is initially at rest and accelerates to 2 meters per second squared. Find the time it takes for P to travel a distance of 1.44 meters from its starting point. Okay, so in this case here, part B is asking us to find the value of mu. Part A is asking us to find the time it takes for it to travel a certain distance. So let's see first, before we draw any diagrams or anything, seeing this is only worth two marks, can we work this out without actually doing any resolving of forces for part A? Do we have enough information? Because there seems to be quite a, a lot of information about um, the distance, its speed, initial and final, and so on. So let's see. Let's write down what we know from SUVAT. Sorry about that. So what do we know from SUVAT? So because it's going with constant acceleration, we can use SUVAT. So S is 1.44 meters. U is zero because it says it started initially at rest. So its initial speed is zero. Accelerates at two meters per second squared. Acceleration is two. And we want to find the time. So this is what we have to find. This we don't know. Okay. But we need to use T in our formula for sure because we've got to find T. And we have S, we have U, and we have A. Okay. So we have enough information to use one of the equations of motion and that would be one of the super equations and that would be s u a t s equals u t plus a half a t squared s equals u t plus a half a t squared and we want to find the time we have s is 1.44 u is zero that's going to be zero times t plus a half times a which is two times t squared so basically that becomes zero that cancels out to give you one so you're left now with 1.44 is equal to t squared so therefore t is going to be the square root of 1.44 which of course we, we're not going to consider the negative square root because it'll be negative time so that should be 1.2 seconds so 1.2 seconds that's like 144 is 12 so that must be 1.2 let's just make sure the square root of 1.44 is equal to 6 over 5, which is 1.2. Okay, good. So there's the answer to part A. We didn't actually have to draw the diagram for part A, okay, um, because we had enough information, and it was only worth two marks, so that was my little kind of, uh, you know, suspicion. We need to draw the diagram, however, for part B, and because I don't want to keep scrolling up and down, I'm going to take this text, I'm going to copy it down so I can see what it is down there. Okay, now, so I have the text here close to... Um, where I need to draw the diagram so that I don't end up wasting my time scrolling up and down and giving everyone a headache. So we have a particle P of mass 0 0.4 kilograms is on a rough horizontal floor. Okay, so it's a rough floor and it's horizontal. Okay, so when it says rough, then in your mind you should understand, okay, there's going to be something involving friction here. The friction must be involved here. So let's say this is the floor. It's rough and you have a particle p which is on this floor so you have a particle p on this floor this is a bit thinner okay so you have a particle p on the floor um let's just draw like a block representing particle p and particle p has a um a mass of 0 0.4 kilograms so that's 0 0.4 kg all right the coefficient of friction between P and the floor is mu. A force of magnitude 3 newtons is applied to P upwards at an angle of alpha above the horizontal. So in our diagram, we're going to draw it like this. Just say, say this is the horizontal. You're going to have a force acting in this direction at an angle alpha. Okay, to the horizontal. This is angle alpha. And the force is magnitude 3 newtons. So that force is 3 newtons acting at an angle of alpha to the horizontal above the horizontal. So alpha above the horizontal. And we know that the tangent of alpha is equal to 3 quarters. They told us that. 
and the particle is initially at rest and accelerates at two meters per second squared. So we might need the fact that it's accelerating at two meters per second squared. All right, now, what are the other forces acting on it apart from the ones that they have explicitly told us? Of course, there's a weight of the particle which acts always vertically down. So there's a weight of the particle. Those are forces acting on the particle. Okay, so that's the weight which is going to be 0 0.4 times g. Now g is going to be 10, so it's going to be 4 newtons. But I'm just going to write it 0 0.4 times g to keep this question open to edXL students as well in case they're watching. And at the end I'll put g as 10, whereas uh, with edXL you have to put g as 9.8. So I want to keep it like open for both boards until the last step. That way, um, just to keep it more kind of general. And uh, we have the force acting on the block, okay? Um, the reaction force between the block and the floor, the, that's acting on the block upwards. That'll be R. If we were to work out the, 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 the forces acting on the floor, then we would say the reaction force of the block on the floor, okay? It would be downwards. But the reaction force of the of the floor on the block is acting upwards. So that we are considering what the force is acting on the particle P, on the, part, on the particle P. That's what we're considering. Okay, the force is acting on this particle. And then you have also, because it's a rough plane and it's moving, so there's a force pulling it, then you have a frictional force acting in the opposite direction to the motion. And that frictional force has reached its maximum level because it's moving. We have F max has been achieved, and we know that F max, F max, the maximum value of friction in any given, given situation is equal to mu times R. And that's what we have to find what mu, find that we have to find what the value of mu is. All right, so those are all the forces acting on this block. Okay, those are the forces acting on this block. Now we have to find what mu is, and we can do that by, by rearranging this and write mu is equal to F max divided by R. So if I can find the value of F max, and I can find the value of R, then I can find the value of mu. Simple as that. Okay? So now, in order to find the value of these things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve the forces horizontally and vertically. Let me just make this a bit shorter so I don't take up so much space. Okay? So let's resolve the forces vertically first. Now, there's a question that's asked many times by students. They say, why isn't R equal to 0.4G in this case? Isn't it always equal to 0.4G? Is not the reaction force always equal to the weight? No. If there are other forces also which have components vertically and horizontally, and ver vertically and horizontally, then the vertical component of the force will add with the R, and it won't be just R equals 0.4G. It will be R plus the vertical component of this force, equals 0.4g or if there's another force acting down pushing the particle down towards the ground like if this was a the alpha you know below the horizontal then you'd have 0.4g plus the component of that force vertically down would be equal to r okay horizontal vertically the forces are balanced out because it's not moving vertically it's moving horizontally so the the, the forces upwards are equal to the forces downwards but we have the component of this force acting in this direction, which I'm going to draw in a different color. Okay, I'll draw in a different color so that it's... So you have the component which is horizontal of this 3 newtons force, and you have the component which is vertical of this 3 newtons force. Now, one of the things that's very important for us to understand, and I'm going through a few basic uh, facts with this particular uh, lesson to make sure that those people who have not learnt certain very important principles, they get to understand them. One of them is how to resolve the forces, you know, in a given direction. So I want to resolve this force. I want to know the vertical and the horizontal component of this force. Okay. Now, if I want to resolve this force in this direction, okay, in this direction here, I have to, I can think of it in two ways. I can think of it, let's just make a little triangle out of this. I'm going to explain it in a couple of different ways so that everyone understands. I'm making a little triangle triangle here. Okay. So this would be the component of the force that 3 newtons is like over here. That's like the hypotenuse. That's at 3 newtons. This is like a right angle. And this is the side which is adjacent to, okay, the angle given. So we could use cosine alpha equals this over 3. 
So this will be this times cosine alpha. So this is going to be 3 times cosine of alpha. And if I want to find the vertical component, that's like looking at this side is going upwards, which is the opposite side. The opposite side, you use sine. You say sine of alpha equals this over, a, over 3. That means this is going to be 3 times sine alpha. So this will be 3 times sine alpha. That's one way of thinking about it, which is good. Personally, I like to think about it in a slightly different way, which I'm going to also explain now. All right, it's basically the same thing, but just thinking about it in a slightly different kind of way. Basically, if you want to resolve this force, I'm going to make another copy of this. Okay, if I want to resolve this force in the direction and I have to go into the angle given, then I'm going to use cosine. See, for me to resolve in this direction, I have to drop into the angle. Go into the angle given. I'll use cosine. If I have to resolve the force in the direction going away from the angle given, see, it's going away from the angle given, then I'll use sine. Into the angle is cosine. Away from the angle is sine. Okay, so that's another way of um, understanding how to deal with this resolving of forces. Okay, but it's important we understand how to do that. So now resolving the forces vertically, I have R acting upwards and I have 3 sine alpha acting upwards and because it's not moving vertically, the forces up and down are balanced out so that's equal to 0.4G. So it's not R equals 0.4G, don't just jump to say that. If there are other forces that have components vertically, you have to include them in the equation. Very, very important. Okay, very, very important. And then we're going to also resolve the forces horizontally. Okay, so I've got here, I'm, I'm, the way I've drawn it is accelerating in this direction. So because it's accelerating, the forces acting to the right and to the left are not equal this time. There's a resultant force. So we're going to use the formula that the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Okay, so the resultant force is the difference between the forces acting in the direction that it's moving. So you're going to have 3 cosine alpha acting in the positive direction and minus F max acting in the opposite direction. And the resultant of those two is going to equal the mass, which is 0 0.4 times the acceleration, which is 2. Okay, so from this equation, I can say R is equal to 0 0.4 G minus 3 sine alpha and from this equation I can say f max is equal to if I bring that to if I add this to both sides I'll have 3 cosine alpha minus that's going to give me 0 0.8 0 0.8 okay 3 cosine alpha minus 0 0.8 now I have what I need to find mu okay so I can say therefore that mu is equal to mu is if equal to f max over R and F max is 3 cosine alpha minus 0 0.8 and R is 0 0.4 G times minus 3 sine alpha. Now we're going to deal with this alpha business. Now many people would find the angle alpha first, all right, inverse tan of three quarters and they'll write down the value of the angle as a decimal and then they will use the sine of that angle and the cosine of the angle and the answer will most likely not come out as an exact answer and sometimes the questions ask us to give the answer in exact form and then we lose marks so we have to know even though some students fight against this at the beginning we have to know how to deal with this in the way that i'm going to show you to avoid losing marks especially in those type of questions you might get away with it in this question but other questions you should know what i'm doing now so if they give you a ratio that the tan or the sine of the cosine of an angle is a certain ratio, we can use that very easily to find what the other ratios are. So for example, I'm going to draw a little triangle. Triangle. Okay, it doesn't have to be accurate. But I'm going to draw a little triangle. Okay, right angle triangle. Okay, and that's going to represent, so just say that this angle here is alpha. Just say this angle here is alpha. Okay. So the tan of the angle, in fact, I need to draw a bit smaller, like this. So the tangent of the angle 
is equal to three quarters. The tangent of the angle is equal to three quarters. So that means this side is going to be three and this side is going to be four. Okay, so now what we have to do, okay, what we have to do now 